Ongkojo. Ong nung bray pa kahm to kay jum na ka ni tip tisa na ka nung dal pa ka jun te krom tam nang ta pinya nam bay ong to ka na pang hain ay ka sa tam luh nung jipu mok ong jun jum bray. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, when I left off, when we left off for the break, um, I was in the middle of addressing documents uh, that are relevant <coughs> to Noon Chea's role and responsibility for matters of the military and security. And Continuing in that part of the presentation, I had one more, uh, one more excerpt uh, to read from uh, the book by Tet Sambat, E152.2. And this excerpt is at Khmer 00858336. English 00757530 and French 00849433. And at this passage, Noon Chea seeks to provide an explanation or justification for the purges. Statement reads as follows, quote, we never accused any top leader without evidence and witnesses, Nguyen Chea said. We knew clearly about their behavior and plans to topple the regime and kill innocent people in the provinces without dissenters' orders and knowledge. Pol Pot had evidence and witnesses, so he decided to arrest them. I have no regrets because when I read the confessions, it was very clear what they were doing. And Nguyen Chea also admits his receipt of confessions in this recorded excerpt from one of his interviews with Tet Sambat. And Mr. President, I would now like to play clip number seven. Clip number seven. This is a document E93 slash 7.3 R V 0 0 7 1 7 0 4 8. It is an interview by Tet Sambat entitled Noon Chea on Confessions. Uh, Mr. President, with your leave, if we could have the AV booth, please play clip number seven, clip number seven titled Confessions. ผมเรียนอนุญาตกลุ่มสองตัวจับใจวิดีโอคลิปที่เปิดเลยเอกรองตัวตัวตามตำราส้มระบบตำราสถาปัตย์ เอ่อสารพิษนั่นบ่าบ่สอมไปบ่ดําไปยัวนั้นตัวอุปกรณ์กรรมาธิบายดําไปผมเอาเอ่อตัวตามมาตัวอุปกรณ์สมปิจิต
สไลสราระบายสีสองนี่ระบายสีสองกินน้ำสบุมาเนี่ยเป็นลุยกะไอ้นี่ที่นักรุ่นไอ้มันเธอมันแบบปวนเธออันนั้นก็อยู่อันจริงจังนะจะเอาบารมีเอาอยู่สำคัญเลยไปยังขังสองไปเรียกบุกมังเอาไปยังขังสองไปเรียกจีน่าไม่ขมังอะไรสักเนี่ยไอ้นี่ผมอยู่ร้อนเออสนุนเชียสอดมิชชั่นในนี้วิดีโอรีคอร์ดในอินเทอร์วิวว่าเขาได้รับหลายคำแนะนำนี่คือการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงที่ได้รับการแสดงจำเลยสารพิบระบบกงกีนอืมในที่ท้ายของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของนี้ของ
And if we show that on the screen, you will see in the upper right corner there is an annotation that reads "Send to Brother Nguyen," and this is on an Aug the August 1977 confession of this North Zone cadre. Next is E3 slash 3697. E3 slash 3697. The relevant uh, ERNs are Khmer 0017-5293, French 0028-9872, English 0082-2359, and this is the confession of uh, a battalion commander and deputy secretary of Division 164, Khun Dim, who we saw in some earlier documents today. And this confession has a, a detailed note by San Sen on the need to contact the East Zone and Division 164 leaders regarding measures to take. And an annotation that you'll see on the left side at the bottom part of that annotation, which reads, one copy sent to Brother Nguyen on 10 September 1977. Next document is E3 slash 1842. This is the S21 confession of Hem Sot at Khmer 00017272, English 00662317, French 00766911. And looking at this, the cover page of this confession, on the upper left side, if we look at the confession page, you will see a handwritten annotation dated the 25th of October 1977 that states, send Brother Nguyen one copy. This is a confession of a cadre who was the Central Zone Chairman of Industry. Next, document E3-3665. At Khmer 0017-4111, English 0022-4634, French 0038-6361. This is the confession of Feng, Peng Sun, alias Che. And on the upper left, you will see a handwritten annotation dated the 25th of October 1977 that reads, quote, a copy has already been submitted to Brother Nguyen. And this is uh, the confession of the Central Zone Commerce Chief. Next, E3 slash 2129, the confession of Chum Pen at Khmer 00017413, English 00769567, French 00343744, if we look at this page, on the screen, you will see a annotation on the upper right side of the document dated the 9th of November 1977 that states sent two copies to Brother Nguyen not yet read. This is the, a confession of a new person from Prey Nat Prey district in the Northwest Zone. Next, E3 
slash 1889, the confession of Sao Tong Li at Khmer 00017492, English 00796688, French 00763394, and on this document, you will see an annotation in the middle right, uh, middle right dated uh, November 9, 1977, that reads, two copies have been sent to Brother Nguyen. This is a confession of another new person from Sector 4 of the Northwest Zone. Next, E3 slash 1875. This is the confession of Pach Che, the chief of the handicraft, handicraft team in Siem Reap. And at Khmer 0001-7468, English 00 Seven four eight three seven three French zero zero seven six six zero seven two. You will see an annotation in the middle of the page dated the ninth of November nineteen seventy seven. The first line reads two copies to Brother Nun. Nun. The next line reads related to both the Northwest Zone and Sector one oh six. Next document is E3 slash 1894. This is the confession of Sim Pui, Pui, alias Sean. Sean. And uh, this is the confession of a company chief from Sector 4. At Khmer 00003357, English 00702082, French 00747499. If you go back to that, you'll see on the upper right an annotation dated the 9th of November 1977 that reads, Send to Brother Nguyen two copies. Next document E3 slash 1879, the S21 confession of Porn Fowl, the chairman of a brick factory in the, in the Ministry of Industry, and the relevant ERN, Khmer 00005192, English 00182725. And French 00796697. If we look at this page, we will see in the middle an annotation dated the 11th of November 1977 that states sent Brother Noon one copy. Next. E3 slash 1537, the confession of Tiv Mai at Khmer 00174754, English 00224639, French 00271459. This is a confession of a new person from the central zone who worked in the law null regime. And this confession contains an annotation. If we look at the document in the upper left, which states one copy has been submitted to Brother Nguyen. Document E3 slash 1688 is the confession of Chap Mit, who was the secretary of Kasach Kandal district in sector 22 of the East Zone. And the relevant page is Khmer 00226401, English 00284069. And French 
And we will see on this document uh, on the bottom half of the page a note written by Dutch. And if I may, if we can show that on the screen, I would like to read the uh, second point uh, in Dutch's note. On this confession, Deutsch writes in the boxed area you see, number two, withdraw the name of Brother Chin, Region 22, Brother Mon, and Brother So. In principle, Brother number two has advised on the 25th of February 1978 that the names of Brother So, Region 23, Brother Mon, Sector 203, Sot, Region 21, Chin, Region 22, Tat and Sok, Division 170, and Tao, Division 290, must be withdrawn if they appear in this confession. Your Honor, we submit these groups of confessions in order to uh, show that Noon Che is a role in relation to security matters is confirmed not only by his statements that you've heard, but also by the actual documents that record his name and his receipt of confessions from S21. There is another group of 13 S21 confessions that is listed in the list uh, that was provided by the co-prosecutors by our office yesterday, last night. I will uh, not go through in detail these 13 documents, but we'll discuss them together because they are related. These are documents on the list that was provided, documents 69 through 81. And these, these 13 confessions, Your Honors, are all from the same time period and they are all confessions of cadres from the same military division in the central zone, Division 174, and indeed most are from one regiment in that division, Regiment 601. All 13 of these confessions were prepared at S21 in late October or early 1977. And if we can just go through and show the cover pages for the first five of these confessions, the first five of the 13 uh, do not have dates indicating the, the specific date on which the confession was sent to Noon Chea. They merely have dates, the dates of the confession. These five confessions, um, if you can, you can proceed to show them on the screen. First is E3 1882, confession of Chap Lun. E3 3689, the confession of Lun. And E3 1831, confession of Chea Sram. E3 1839, the confession of D. Lang. And E3 1841, the confession of M. Chea. Each of which has an annotation sta stating that a copy was sent to Brother Nguyen. And the next eight confessions that are on our list, numbers 74 through 81 on the list we sent yesterday, have dates, indicate the date on which uh, the confession was forwarded to Brother Noon. The first of the eight was sent on the 10th of November, 1977. If we look at that one, that is document E3 slash 3645. E3 3645, the confession of Mao Chun. 
The other seven, Your Honor, seven confessions, all of them were sent to Noon Chea on the same day, the 11th of November, 1977. All of them are cadres from the same division and mostly the same regiment in the Central Zone. The seven confessions are E3, Slash 1687. You can show these as we go along. Which is Chup E3 slash 1764. Confession of Khan. Khan. E3 slash 1843. The confession of Bao. And if we can show these on the screen as we uh, go along. E3 slash 1869, the confession of Nim Sim. E3 slash 1886, the confession of Sak Man. E3 1826, the confession of Tang On. And the last in the group is E3 slash 3648, the confession of Sing Pong. And if we look, stop and look at, at this last confession, E3 3648 at Khmer page 00173881. The other confessions all essentially use the same language, copies submitted Brother Nguyen. This one states one copy for Brother Nguyen to deliver to the central zone. Your Honors, we uh, present uh, this group of 13 confessions, all from one military unit in the central zone, as particularly important to show that Nguyen Chea had a role relating to the military and relating to the purge of this unit. In the statements he provided to Tet Sambat in his book, going back again to E152.2, and the reference that I would like to go to at this time is at Khmer 00858383. Through five nine, English zero zero seven five seven five three seven, and French ERN zero zero eight four nine four four eight. In this passage, Noon Noon Chea himself describes putting annotations on confessions he received. And the section reads as follows, Noon Chea said that when he read confessions, he found the crimes that some of the prisoners were accused of were benign. He said some people were not guilty of anything, but they had walked somewhere, wore something, or ate something without permission. Or they were arrested just because another prisoner had accused them of wrongdoing without proof. Attributing a quote here to Noon Shea, specific quote, quote, they normally confessed when they were beaten painfully and seriously tortured. Said. This confession could not be valid and usable, so they must be released. Some of the accused were very young, and of quote, attributed to Noon Chea. The book continues. Noon Chea said, when he read these confessions, he made marks on the documents with a red pen to show they were invalid and that the prisoner was not guilty. End of quote. And your honors, the next group of documents I will present are six S21 confessions or other security-related documents 
that have been identified by S-21 Chairman Deutsch as bearing Nguyen Chea's handwriting. As we will see on these documents where we have colored copies, some of that handwriting indeed is in red. Contrary to what was told to Tet Sambat in the statement I just read, we will see that these handwritten notes do not direct the release of any prisoners. Let me turn to these documents. And I will first start by going back to uh, the first confession in the initial series. Uh, this is confession E3 slash 1565. And it is the first uh, slide in this uh, part of the document presentation. E3 slash 1565, uh, same page I've read before, from Air 0001-7305. And if we can show this on the screen, the this is a particularly significant confession as we look at it here because it bears the handwriting of the three key protagonists from S responsible for S-21, Duch, Son Sen, and Nun Chea. On this confession, we see on the bottom half a 21 May 1977 note from Deutsch to respected bro brother that is on the bottom part. And then in the top part of the document, there is an annotation written across the top dated the 23rd of May 1977, part of which states sent to Brother Noon personally or directly. If we go to the next slide, we can we focus in on the top part of the document. And we'll see the handwriting that has been identified by Deutsch as Son Sens is the one that is on the right side and part of the left side. And there is a third person's handwriting that can be seen on the upper left side in bigger characters, which reads, quote, excerpts sent to Comrade Mok. And it is this handwriting that has been identified by Duch as Noon Chaes. And if we go to the next slide, that handwriting has been isolated so that we can see the particular handwriting uh, of Noon Chea identified by Deutsch on this confession. The next slide shows document E3 slash 175, which is a letter, a 17 April 1978 letter from the North Zone Secretary, Sai, forwarding, which we have seen and talked about before, forwarding two confessions to Committee 870 to serve as documents for researching embedded traitorous networks burrowing from within. And in this color copy, if we look at, go back to the document on the screen, you will see an annotation written in red on the left side of the letter, which states, follow up. This handwriting has been identified by Deutsch as Nguyen Chea's handwriting. And if we go to the next slide, you will see the red writing, the red handwriting from the second document next to the other handwriting identified as Nguyen Chea's. The next slide is the third document that has been identified as containing Nguyen Chea's handwriting. The S-21 Confession of Ministry of Social Affairs Cadre Mok Sam O, E3 slash 1546. And if we look at, look at the screen at this document, we can see that the relevant annotation is again in red. And if we go to the next slide, we focus in on, on that part of the document. The handwriting in red annotation reads, 
quote, Ministry of Social Affairs, it has already been resolved, end of quote. And in the next slide, you can see the handwriting from this document compared to the prior two. Next, the next slide is the S-21 confession of San Pao, a Ministry of Foreign Affairs cadre from the state market. It is document E-3-1548, E-3-1548. And the, uh, if we look at the screen, there is a red annotation in the upper left-hand corner of this document, if we can show it on the screen. The annotation in red on this document states, or in the upper left-hand corner, states Comrade Van a reference to the alias of Ministry of Foreign Affairs Secretary Ng Suri. This handwriting has also been identified by Deutsch as Nun Chaez. And in the next slide, you can see, compare the handwriting to the other three documents. Next, the next slide is the S-21 confession of Meek Tush, who was the DK ambassador to Laos. It is document E3-1547. And if we focus on the top part of this document in the next slide, the handwriting that appears in the upper left corner states Comrade Van, same as the prior document. And it has also been identified by Deutsch as Nun Che's writing. In the next slide, you will see all five of these annotations together. And the next slide is the sixth and last document in this series, which is E3-1098, E3-1098. It is a letter dated the 26th of March, 1978, that was written by the West Zone Deputy Secretary, Paul, regarding the arrest and transfer to Phnom Penh of the wife of purged West Zone Secretary Chu Chet, alias C, whose wife was the secretary of Udong District. The letter reads, quote, to respected and beloved Ankar, we would like to send Lee Neri, spouse of C via K7. Please, Ankar, seize this person. Next, we will send you Mool, referring to the Deputy Secretary of Udon District. And if you look at the left side, there is an annotation in red in the upper left that has been identified by Dutch as Nunche's handwriting, which states S. 21. And in our last slide in the series, you will see this annotation compared to the other five that have been identified as Nunche's handwriting. Your Honors, um, I have a couple more, one document that I would like to go back to at this time. Before I do that, uh, let me just briefly note here, um, we have uh, previously presented to this court uh, statements by Ng Suri in various interviews and documents in which he states that Nun Chea was a member of the party's military or security committee. And as we presented these before, I will not read them again, read the contents again. But I do wish to note for the record the identity of the three documents in which Ding Suri states that Moon Chea was a member of the party's military committee. First is E3-94, an interview of Ing Suri conducted on the 22nd of July, 1981, at Khmer 00578895. 
English zero zero three four two five zero one through zero two French zero zero six zero two zero 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 the second document E three slash ninety three an interview of Ing Sri that was conducted on the twenty eighth of August nineteen ninety six at Khmer 0022444443 English 00078610 French 00347376 and the third document from Ming Suri indicating that Nunchea was on the military committee is E3 slash 86, the statement I presented earlier today from Ing Suri's DNUM group on the 8th of September 1996, and the passage in that document can be found at English 00081215, Khmer 00224430, and French 00. Six one four zero nine four. And at this point, I want to go back to a document that I. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, my client is listening this moment uh, to presentation of key documents of, uh, by the prosecutor. And uh, I think it would be uh, good if those three passages from uh, Ing Suri's interview will be read to him. Uh, it might be that they were earlier read during the absence of my client. I'm not quite sure about that, but nevertheless, we are not short of time, so I would like to ask the prosecutor to read those three uh, passages that he's just uh, Mr. President, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I may have to do it from the computer screen, so if I can have just 30 seconds just to pull uh, the document up, uh, and, uh, and I'm happy to oblige counsel and, and read, read those passages, if I can have them moment. I'm uh, ready. I'll uh, try my best to read from the computer screen. Uh, E3, I won't repeat the ERN numbers, but I will. The first document was E394, which was the in interview of Ing Sri conducted on 22 July 1981. And in this interview, Ing Sri made the following statement in response to certain questions. Quote, question, who was in charge of security? Answer, three or four very top leaders discussed the matter then reported to the standing committee. Question, who were those three or four leaders? Answer, Pol Pot, Noon Chea, Sao Pim, and Son Sen. Son Sen was in charge of security. They relied on regional people for reporting on security. The second document, Mr. President, the second document was E3 slash 93. This was an interview of Ying Suri conducted on the 28th of August 1996. 
And in this interview, Ng Sri made the following statement. Quote, I am not the right hand Obviously, the main right hand man is Nu Chea. And there was a committee which considered all questions about security which comprised four people, Pol Pot, Nguyen Chea, Son Sen, and Son Sen's advisor, Yun Yat. And the last, the third uh, document is a statement, is the statement that was issued by Ng Suri's group, Dinam, on the 8th of September 1996, which contains the following statement, quote, the government was only a screen to hide Pol Pot's personal dictatorship, firmly based on the secret security committee composed of Noon Chea, Son Sen, alias Q, and Son Sen's advisor, his wife, Yun Yat, alias Ad. From 1975 to 1978, it was this gang of four, Pol Pot, Nguyen Chea, Son Sen, Yun Yat, who decided the killings and massacres. End of quote. Um, Mr. President, at this time, I'd like to return earlier today in the uh, group of documents in which Nguyen Che is identified as acting Prime Minister. Uh, one of them, uh, E3-147, E3-147, the pages that uh, were identified earlier, um, is the Phibus report of a radio broadcast uh, in which Noon Chea made a speech uh, to the a gathering of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea at a commemoration of its ninth anniversary on the 16th of January, 1977. And this document is quite significant uh, as it uh, it is uh, the radio broadcast, as is indicated at the very start, was just of excerpts of the speech by Noon Chea. The full speech can be found in the revolutionary flag for December 1976 to January 1977, uh, which is document E3-25, E3-25. And in this document, you, you will find the entire speech in an issue that was released just for the party members. And in E3-25, that speech, which is titled The Presentation of the Comrade Party Representative on the Occasion of the Ninth Anniversary of the Founding of the Brave, Strong, Skilled, and Magnificent Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea. That speech starts at, for the record, starts at Khmer 0006 French 00504027 and English 00491416. In the revolutionary flag issue, Nguyen Chea is not identified by name. He is identified by name in the radio broadcast of excerpts of the speech. So I wish to quickly touch upon uh, a comparison of the two documents uh, so that 
the court can see uh, how it is evident that the speech on the radio in E3 147 made by Nguyen Chea is the same speech that appears in the revolutionary flag E325. And the best way to show that, well, the court itself will be able to follow along the two speeches and see how they track. But to give you a couple, just two examples of that, uh, at the outset of the speech, and I will first read um, the from the radio broadcast, that is, in which Nguyen Che is identified by name. And at the very start of the speech, Nguyen Che makes two points. And this is at the very outset. You will find this in E3 147 at Khmer 00679793. English 00168465. Six five French zero zero six nine eight four 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 and the first point reads the first point is that the anniversary of our revolutionary army reminds us of its great sense of heroism. At this moment, we think with profound emotion and revolutionary sentiment of our comrades in arms. And then continuing to the next paragraph, the second point is that we should be greatly pleased about our formerly empty-handed army's present condition. We should have great pleasure at the thought that never before have we had such an army as the present revolutionary army. And to compare that, if you look at the start of the speech in the revolutionary flag. And here, this is document E325. I would refer you to pages Khmer 0006-3016, English 0049-14-0793, and French 00504028329. And you will see here the exact same content. The, the speech starts by providing, making two impressions. Quote, our first impression is that the ninth anniversary of the founding of our army leads us to think about the high and lofty heroism of the revolution, revolutionary army. And then continuing to the second point, our second impression on this occasion is that all of us, when we think of our revolutionary army that was built with our bare hands up until the day, we are all happy and unimaginably satisfied because originally we never had an army. And you can follow through the speech that was broadcast on the radio with the speech in the revolutionary flag and see how they match up. Let me give one more quick example for the court's reference. In the radio broadcast of Noon Chea's speech, E3-147, at page Khmer 00679796, English 00168467, French 00698446. There is a paragraph that reads as follows. The start, quote, the start of the armed struggle on 17 January 1968 was not accidental. Since 1960, our Cambodian revolutionary organization had drawn up the strategic and tactical lines, and it then continues, continues on to explain those. You will find the corresponding part 
of the speech in revolutionary flag at Khmer 00063023, English 00491412, and French 00504033. And that paragraph starts off. Next, I wish, quote, I wish to inform you that opening fire on 17 January 1970, 1968 was not an accident. And then it goes on to discuss the strategic lines of the party in 1960. I make these references to your honors um, as simply uh, as it is important to see the uh, relationship between these two documents. And I will note um, just one part, one significant part uh, from the speech. There is quite a few parts. Uh, it is a long speech in which Noon Jae covers the history of the military and the party lines. Uh, there is much information in there, but uh, one of the most significant parts of the speech uh, can be seen in the Revolutionary Flag publication, E325, at pages Khmer 00063023. Through 4 1, English 00 49 and French 00 And this is a document that the court may recall from near the start of the trial, as it is quite important. This is a, a section where Noon Chea discusses the strategy, the military strategy of seizing or controlling the people. Let me just read a couple of short excerpts. Quote, we seize victory by implementing these combat lines correctly. A. Attacking the enemy politically, taking just one example, fighting to seize the people. Throughout the world, they never fought to seize the people. Our line was to fight to seize the people. One, we took him. Two, we took them. One hundred, we took them. One thousand, we took them, and so on, until we fought for and seized the people from Phnom Penh, too. The line of drawing up the people from the enemy was very correct. Continuing in the next paragraph, an example, the fighting in Banham in 1973. We took everyone in Banham town, expelling the ethnic Vietnamese, the ethnic Chinese, the military, the police. We took everyone, drawing up the people from the enemy. And two, two paragraphs below this, quote, we liberated Udong in 1974. We pulled out all the people. When they took it back, they had no forces. In the next paragraph, quote, this is a very important strategic line, control the people and seize the people, end of quote. Your Honours, um, when Noon Chea, while Noon Chea opened up and made significant admissions to Tet Sambat in their interviews, which you have seen today, while he made admissions to Tet Sambat regarding his knowledge and responsibility for events during the regime, 
He also made it clear to Tet Sambat that he did not intend to be as forthcoming with this court. And I would like to read an excerpt from, again from E152.2 at Khmer 0085-8404, English 0075-7560. And French 00849479, which reads, in which the following statement is attributed to Noon Chea. Quote, if they ask me in court who killed the people, I will say I was in charge of the legislative body and education. So the killing was the problem of government administration, which was the responsibility of Pol Pot and Son Sen, he said. And continuing the quote attributed to Noon Chea, quote, if they still ask, then I will tell them it started with Kissinger, end of quote. We have seen this at various points uh, from Noon Chea, including his initial appearances at this court, the documents that my colleague read to you this morning. And I will close my presentation, Your Honors, uh, with one more a video clip. This is a, a for the AV booth. This is clip number 10. We will skip 8 and 9. This will be clip number 10. And it is document E93 slash 7.3 R case file B0071-7048. It is interview by Tet Sambat entitled Noon Chea on the Nation. And Mr. President, with your leave, if the AV booth could play, please play clip number 10, which is titled No Regrets. ពុទ្ធនឹងបាត់ប្រទេសជាតិបាត់ប្រជាជនស្លាប់ប្រជាជនបាត់ប្រទេសកម្ពុជាខ្ញុំដល់ឥឡូវទេមិនស្ទុក
Uh, your Honours, uh, that ends our presentation on the role of the accused Moon Chea. We finished early today, uh, but we uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, present these documents. បាទអរគុណលោកគណៈការបញ្ញាតែបានធ្វើបទបង្ហាញ <coughs> I សូមពាក្យគីនៃតំណងរឿងក្តីបុគ្គលិកគាំព្រោះកិច្ចចំណើកការតម្មការអង្គរិយាលទ្ធបងនិងសាធារណជនជាតិអង្គរិយាលប្